Good afternoon, members. Um, I call this meeting of Committee of Workforce and Business Development Finance and Policy to order. Members, please mute your mics as we start this meeting today. Uh, again, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, State Representative Mahmoud Nur, the Chair for the Workforce and Business Development. And uh, this is uh, January 11th. Uh, this is our first meeting of this committee. Uh, to start with, uh, this remote hearing is conducted pursuant to Rule 10.01. If you have any questions about accessibility of remote hearing or require an accommodation, please contact Jenny Nash. You can send an email to Jenny at jenny.nashsh at house.mn. Or you can leave a message at 651 Two nine six four one two two. Please do not contact her in regards to any matters before this committee or any issues regarding workforce and business development. If you have got any issues that you wanted to present to the committee, please contact Travis Reese, who is our committee administrator, or you can contact Jason Chavez, who is our committee legislative assistant. Uh, this remote hearing can be viewed at House Television webcast. I believe today we are on HTV3 for the viewers in, in the public. Uh, with that, I just wanted to uh, welcome Jason Chavez, the Committee Legislative Administrator, to take the role. Nor. Present. Zhang. Jay Zhang. Present. Hamilton. I just let him in. We can circle back. Baker. Baker. Daphne. Present. Frankie. Present. Greenman. Present. Haley. Haley. Present. Jurgens. Present. Kegel. Present. Patisa Watoon. Present. Olson. Present. Tu Zhang. Tu Zhang. Okay. Hamilton. Present. Baker. Baker, Tu Zhang, Tu Zhang, we have quorum chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Jason Chavez. Uh, this is uh, our first meeting. I wanted to start with a quick introduction uh, to the committee as a whole. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to know each other and also to uh, say a few things in regards to what you're aspiring to see in this committee. Uh, without uh, going further, I'm going to start myself and I think uh, uh, Jason Chavez will call the rest of the members uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Nur. I know sometimes people call me Mohammed. Uh, technically uh, it's Mah, M-A-H, and then Mood, M-O-O-D, if you wanted me to pronounce in the fanatical way. Uh, so it's Mahmoud Nur. Uh, I'm the chair for the jobs and uh, for the workforce and business development. I'll find myself calling this committee jobs, but technically it's workforce and business development uh, finance and policy committee. Um, I represent district uh, 60B that is in Minneapolis, uh, the neighborhood surrounding uh, district uh, 60, uh, 60B is the University of Minnesota. It's the neighborhood surrounding the University of Minnesota and I'm honored to represent that district. Uh, this is my second term, and this is also my second time serving on this committee. Uh, I'm greatly honored to work with all of you as we tackle some of the significant challenges that we have and some of the big issues that I look forward to working during the upcoming uh, sessions that we have is to address the impact of COVID-19 on small businesses, on workers, and making sure that we build a system that lasts beyond the COVID-19. I know the previous system didn't work for all of us, and we must make sure that we provide those opportunities to everyone 
so that we can succeed as a state. So with that said, I wanted to uh, welcome other members uh, to the Workforce Committee. And we are going to be uh, stating our name, uh, the district you represent, uh, if this is your first time or second time, or how many times you've served in the workforce, uh, although it's no longer jobs, uh, I consider that to be related to the workforce uh, uh, and uh, business development. So uh, Jason, uh, please uh, uh, start with the members. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And I would like to note that Representative Tu Zhang just entered the room. Um, Representative Jay Zhang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Jay Xiong. The proper way to pronounce my last name is Xiong, but I get Zhang, I get Xiong, I get Zhang, I get Song, which is in my 38 years, I'm totally fine with whatever you say, but if anyone wants to know the correct way, it's Xiong. Um, and this is my second term and my second time being on this committee. I'm looking forward to working with Mr. Chair uh, and all of you in here uh, to address the uh, many pressing issues uh, in our state and also to ensure that uh, as we move forward with our work, we have a racial equity lens uh, applying to uh, the legislation that we're moving on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Hamilton. Yeah. It's, uh, I represent, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I represent District 22B. It's the southwestern part of the state. Uh, the city of Worthington would be the largest community. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you and I were able to work together in the past on Health and Human Services Finance Committee. And I really appreciated working with you and the friendship uh, that developed uh, through all that. Um, I asked myself, uh, what was uh, the most pressing issue facing the state uh, as it pertains um, um, you know, recently here? And, it, and uh, collectively working with other members, uh, um, we've, you know, outline that it is safely reopening businesses and uh, retool and retrain employees. And I, I see that we have uh, uh, very important things to address here as a committee. And Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to state that our team on the Republican side, uh, we met and we're very excited uh, about uh, participating on this. Uh, we have a strong team with a very diverse background. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that uh, we can set the tone of working together as well, um, you and I and, and the others, uh, because this is very important. And, and uh, one of the experiences that I've had is uh, working on the Agriculture Committee and friends, we have put uh, partisan politics aside on the Ag Committee and uh, uh, whether we're in the majority or the minority, we've been able to bring forth uh, bills uh, that have passed on a bipartisan basis and I'd like to uh, bring that um, spirit, if you will, to this committee as well. So I'm very excited about working on this committee and I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you. And uh, uh, Representative uh, Hamilton is the ranking member of the, uh, for the uh, GOP. I just wanted to note that. Representative Baker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and sorry for my delay in getting on the call. Um, I'm in route now to St. Paul from Wilmer, and <clears throat> I think Rod said a lot of good things there. Again, I'm uh, uh, just entering my fourth term, small business guy. I also uh, wanted to just make sure that I uh, uh, continue with the same sense of cooperation with my lead and our lead here, uh, Representative Hamilton. But I also want to say to Chair Nor. Uh, and certainly Travis, the CA, uh, it's been great working with you on our recent uh, business relief grant uh, bill that we passed in December. Uh, we spent uh, probably 12 days, morning, noon, and nights together working on that. And I really appreciated that. I know that uh, that is gonna turn into some really important help for our businesses out in Minnesota. And I hope that that kind of spring load on making businesses uh, better planted, uh, better uh, building a better foundation for 
anything that might come along in the future that we just never imagined uh, what we are seeing here now in the early part of 2021. So I'm um, getting ready to get to work. And again, looking forward to uh, uh, continuing our momentum of helping businesses as we move along. So thanks again for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Representative Dabney. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chavez. Uh, Representative Jim Dabney, I represent District 63A. That's part of South Minneapolis. Uh, this is my third term on this uh, iteration of the Jobs Committee. I suspect it will take me most of the session uh, to start calling it the Workforce Committee. Uh, just uh, old habits die hard. And I, I see uh, Representative Hamilton uh, smiling, I think, in recognition. Of, of those challenges. Uh, my commitment here is to continue to work as I, I hope I have uh, to try to make sure that uh, all Minnesotans have the opportunity to thrive in our state and to recognize that particularly this year, uh, the, that work is even more uh, important and needs to be more focused on the issues of the pandemic as Chair Noor has raised, but also uh, the issues of the legacy of racial disparities uh, and ongoing expression of racial disparities in our, our state. And that will be uh, the continuation of my work here. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Representative Frankie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, want to say that uh, I'm excited to be here. Keith Frankie, 54A. Cottage Grove, St. Paul Park, Newport, Great Cloud Island Township, and South St. Paul are the cities that I represent. This is my second non-consecutive term um, as a state representative. Um, when it pertains to this committee, I'm just really excited to be on this committee and be taking part in being able to bring a little bit of the on the ground experience, being a small cafe owner and a small bar owner um, during everything that's going on. So bringing some real world uh, common sense to the discussion about how things are actually being implemented on the ground and how it affects the employees and everybody out there being affected. Um, so just really excited to be here. Really looking forward to getting to work on a lot of the issues facing our state. And thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Greenman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am Emma Greenman and I uh, um, was newly elected. So this will be my first term from 63B, which is South Minneapolis and, and Eastern Richfield. Um, and I come here with a background as a voting rights lawyer. And so one of the things I'm really interested in bringing to you uh, is listening, um, both listening to the needs of uh, um, the communities in my district across the state um, uh, both in terms of workforce development, in terms of jobs and unemployment, as well as small businesses. And I know that in, in our region, but also across the state, um, issues of uh, disparities uh, with Black, Latinx, Indigenous uh, uh, communities of color in both uh, small businesses and in, in our workforce development are really critical. And so thinking about uh, this year, both um, in what folks are dealing with uh, in the in the pandemic, but also in thinking about creating that Minnesota where where everyone thrives. And I'm excited to get to work with all of you to make sure that we can tackle some of those issues and make sure that that everybody has um, what they need and that our communities are thriving. Thank you. Representative Haley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we got to know each other uh, better this summer when we worked on some uh, policy issues together. So uh, congratulations on your role chairing this committee. And I look forward to partnering with you closely uh, as our success in this committee really dictates, in my opinion, the success of our businesses being able to respond and rebound uh, from COVID. Uh, and I'm just uh, really happy to serve on this committee now for my uh, uh, second term. I served on it last term as well. I think we did some really innovative work last term 
particularly getting the angel investment tax credit uh, uh, back going. Um, we also launched uh, Launch Minnesota, and there's been some great work done on our entrepreneurial ecosystem across the state. And I think that work uh, will serve us well, again, as we try to rebound from the economic downturn due to COVID. Um, I also have a keen interest in connecting um, youth and industry and uh, the youth skills training uh, program uh, again, had uh, met great success, and I think we can do more work there. We know that we have uh, a lot of open jobs across the state, and particularly in the technical fields, uh, we have more you know, job openings that we, than we have job seekers. And I think it's incumbent on this committee to try to look for creative ways to kind of you know, bridge that gap, and particularly make sure that our young people are aware of the uh, technical uh, and manufacturing jobs available all across our state. Um, so some partnership there with our, you know, high schools and higher ed, um, I think are, pose some unique opportunities for us. Um, and lastly, we, we have a, a number of resources in, in our state to address workforce that many states don't have. And uh, with a, a budget shortfall, uh, I think it's our responsibility to make sure that those resources are really targeted to where our businesses need workers and make sure that those are used wisely in the next biennium. So I'm looking forward to the work and looking forward to the partnership with all of you. Representative Jurgens. Thank you and thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, Representative Tony Jurgens from District 54B, uh, which is Southeast Metro. Uh, Representative Frankie has part of Cottage Grove and I have the rest of Cottage Grove. I also have Afton, Hastings, uh, Denmark Township and Ninninger Township. I'm in my third term in the House of Representatives, uh, my first year on uh, any iteration of this committee. Um, and you know, I don't, it's not for me to say which committees are more important than any others, they are, they're all important. But as we look at a deficit this year or in the, in the coming biennium, um, it's very important that we do our part to help our business owners uh, safely reopen and get back to um, the economy that we enjoyed before COVID hit. Uh, we had budget surplus after budget surplus. So we know that our economy has a potential to really get cranked up. And I think that as we're discussing uh, ways to balance our budget, uh, the most important way in my opinion is to grow our way out of it by getting our Minnesotans back to work. So I really think that this committee um, has a, a tall task in front of us, uh, but I'm, I'm very happy to be on the committee and the work that we have uh, in front of us. Thank you. Representative Cagle. Thank you. I'm Representative Aaron Cagle. I represent District 37A, which is Blaine, Coon Rapids, and Spring Lake Park. Um, this is my third term, second term on this committee. And um, being on the um, Select Committee for Racial Justice this um, interim, I would really like to see some of the um, issues around the cost of racism addressed. And I think, um, you know, the, with the COVID-19 recovery, um, yes, we want to get back to how it was before, but we also have to recognize that um, the economy didn't work for everybody before. And so um, I think it's really important that we keep that in mind and make sure that we're going forward with um, equity and uh, in our in in the forefront of our, our head when we um, think about some of these policy changes and, and um, legislation that we're working on. Thank you. Representative Cotiza Watun. Representative Cotiza Watun. She may have had to step off for a minute, but she said that she'll come back and do her introduction at the end when she returns. Perfect. Representative Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Jason. Uh, Liz Olson, District 7B, which is the cent central and west parts of Duluth. And I'm in my third term, and this is my first time on uh, this committee or any iteration of it. And so happy to be here. And for me, I think it's two reasons that I really wanted to be on this committee. I'm excited to work with Chair Noor and all of you. And coming from Duluth and being a regional hub, I think it's important for Northeast Minnesota, particularly Duluth, to have 
a voice in these matters um, around workforce and around um, innovation and around where we're going as a state. And the second part I think has been touched on by a lot of folks is with the pandemic and what it exposed, we really have a lot of opportunity to be deliberate about how we come together and how we set our budget and how we do that through this committee in particular. I think there is an incredible amount of opportunity to right some wrongs and bring equity into the conversation. And just today I heard that the job loss numbers of 140,000 jobs lost um, in the United States, all of them were jobs women had. Um, and so there's something we need to do and voices we need to have at the table. And I'm excited that this group gets to tackle these really big challenges in front of us. Representative Tu Xiong. Hello, uh, I'm Representative Tu Zhang, the other Zhang in the committee. Um, I'm from uh, House District 53A, which is the East Metro Cities of Lake Missouri and Oakdale. And um, yeah, I'm excited to be here on this committee. And you know, I think some of the present and continuing needs that I want to work on um, is getting workers the training and skills that they need um, and the accessibility of those training opportunities for all Minnesotans. And some of the future needs uh, we're trying to work on, I would like to work on um, is to prepare Minnesota for uh, the demographic uh, changes that will come into the future, uh, such as, you know, the, the age changes in age, or aging population, aging workforce, um, and the projected workforce shortage that, you know, Minnesota will see and the country will see. And so uh, helping to prepare that next generation to literally stand up and be the backbone for this country. Thank you. I think um, that's true with all the members. I don't know if uh, Representative Kali Kutuzotun is back with us. If not, we'll come back uh, to her when she is uh, able to. Uh, so thank you members uh, and, and welcome again to workforce and business uh, development. Um, I'm excited to work with all of you uh, as we uh, try to do our best to ensure that we support businesses, but we also address the needs of the workers. Uh, we cannot do this work without the support of our phenomenal staff who have done a great job uh, to get us through this process. Uh, they do an amazing work. I uh, just wanted to start introducing uh, the committee staff. Uh, we'll start with uh, uh, the committee administrator, Travis uh, Reese. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, again, my name is Travis Reese. This is my second term working on this, um, these issues. Um, although last by any, I did split my time also on the Commerce Committee um, and Labor. Uh, so uh, and this year I work on this committee and I also work on the Labor and Vets Committee with Chair Eklund. So um, between this committee and Labor, I think I have these issues pretty well-rounded view. So I really appreciate that. I'm looking forward to working with everyone on this committee. I think there's a lot of great legislation and um, issues that can pass through this committee. So from a staff perspective, it's never boring. So I'm really looking forward to um, working with everyone and I'm happy to be a resource as often as needed. Um, I, during all these introductions, I find myself saying, I do have two kids at home, nine and 10. So we are doing school. So I will be a resource as often as I'm available, but I'm a resource to them first. So leave a message, send an email. I'll get back to you when I can. But I, I'm actually excited to be back on this and then working with Chair Noor. Um, I really appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Travis. Uh, as you have had, if you have got any questions, if you have got bills or anything, he is uh, the person that you will contact with. Uh, please uh, feel free to connect with him. Uh, I see Representative uh, Cortizo Otun. Uh, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I had to step away for a moment and uh, pick up my daughter from school. So I'm um, happy to be on this committee. This is my second term in the legislature and my first term on this committee. So I look forward to working with all of you and um, making sure that Minnesotans can make it through this pandemic and that we come out on the other side even stronger. Um, my background is in entrepreneurship and um, operations, business operations. So I just look forward to um, making sure that we can um, put together some solutions that are going to help all Minnesotans uh, either get back to work or keep working and um, make sure that our economy continues to, to grow and strengthen afterward. 
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll continue with the committee staff. Uh, we have our committee legislative assistant, uh, Jason uh, Chavez. Thank you, Chair. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Chavez. I've been working for the chair since he was first elected in 2018, and while he was the vice chair of the jobs committee as well. And I'm coming from the public safety and criminal justice reform committee, um, whose committee I was in for the past two years. So I'm really excited to get to work with all of you. And um, if you all need anything else, um, you can help out as well. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Jason. Uh, we have the nonpartisan house research, Anna Shalim, assigned to our committee. If you've got any bills that you wanted to introduce or ideas, uh, she is the person to go to. Uh, please, uh, Anna Shalim, introduce yourself to the committee. Sure, members. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm Anna Shalim. I'm in my fifth year with the House Nonpartisan Research Office. And I cover workforce business development. And so I'll be working with the Labor Committee some as well but this is the primary committee I'm on. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Sholin. Uh, I wanted to introduce the House Nonpartisan Fiscal Staff assigned to our committee, Ms. Uh, Beckel, uh, Solveig Beckel, please introduce yourself to the committee. Mr. Chair and members, yes, uh, my name is Solveig Beckel and I will be uh, the fiscal staff for this committee. Uh, I have been with the legislature for about two years now, and I have been working on jobs, economic development, climate, and energy throughout that time. Um, so I look forward to uh, explaining my role a bit further later on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Beckel. Uh, we do have the DFL research. Uh, Dave uh, Sullivan, uh, please uh, introduce yourself to the committee. <clears throat> uh, hello, everyone. I'm David Sullivan with House DFL Research. Uh, this will be my 15th legislative session. I started at the House in 2007, and almost that entire time I staffed the Jobs Committee. So I, I did some quick math and I realized more than one fourth of my life has been devoted to the Jobs Committee. So hopefully you'll give me some leeway more than anyone, anyone else if I continue to refer to this committee as the Jobs Committee, but I'll do my best to get the name right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, we have the Republican research, Bill uh, Glenn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Bill Glenn, the House Republican researcher. I joined the department in 2015 and supported the committee when it was the Jobs Committee, chaired by Chair Garofalo uh, during those two terms opposite uh, Mr. Sullivan, and it's uh, great to be back. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Glenn. So we have a uh, uh, full introduction of the members and staff. So welcome aboard again. Uh, today is just the beginning of our introduction and we do have some overview uh, from uh, research and fiscal staff. We wanted just to begin as introductory. And then if someone has got any issues that they just wanted to cover, we can use a few remarks after the presentation by the house research uh, so that we can go over. Some of the stuff that we're gonna be covering, it's not uh, holistic. We've got some few jurisdiction issues that we're going to be uh, going through because of the separation of uh, tasks to Department of Labor and DEED, as I assume most of the work through the Department of Employment and Economic Development will be handled uh, through this committee. So we do have a significant work I uh, just wanted to introduce, uh, introduce again the house research to go over some of the, uh, as an overview for our, our committee. Please welcome uh, Ms. Sholin. Karen members. Uh, I'm familiar with many of you from before, but since we have a lot of new people on the committee and one new member, I think one brand new member, uh, just to go over again, house research with a nonpartisan office. I'll be staffing this committee and we'll be doing things like writing bill summaries for every bill you guys hear. So there's a short one page, usually description of what the bill covers, might give some helpful context, uh, history of funding in that area, since a lot of the bills we'll be considering will be funding bills. Um, I also, um, who you should contact if you need an amendment for this committee or if you want a bill for that covers uh, that would fall within this committee's jurisdiction. I can also answer questions anytime about any of these subjects. Just let me know. I'll, I'm here to be a resource for all those things. So 
one of the things I do during the interim, years where we get to have an interim, uh, I write publications about the subject area. So I've included two of those, uh, Travis sent those out. Um, one's a, uh, it's like a glossary of acronyms. This is an area that we have a lot of word, letter salad. <laughs> um, and so if you get a little confused with NIF, JCF, uh, CDFIs, all that, that, that can sort of give you some brief summaries, where to look for a reference to look it up in the statutes. Um, and there's also a document, Economic Development and Job Creation Programs in Minnesota. And this again gives an overview of some of the larger programs in a number of different business assistance areas and work, uh, not workforce development. This one only covers a business development. Um, so that again, just give you a little cheat sheet as we're going through these things. As the chair alluded to, the purview of this committee is still maybe a little little being decided at the edges, but in general, we're going to be covering programs and policies done by the Department of Employment and Economic Development, or DEED. And so uh, the main uh, areas is uh, our administration of that agency. Uh, there are wide range of business development programs and workforce development programs. They also handle unemployment insurance and vocational rehabilitation, which is uh, employment services primarily for people with disabilities. There is not a lot of what you would call pol pure policy in this committee, we don't think at this point, because um, almost all of what we do, it's money for this. And so uh, there are many, many programs run through DEED. I know they'll be giving an overview later this week and I'm also here to answer any questions. They have several good reports about past performance of their different programs. Uh, I, I can help you find those. They might be presenting those as well. And there's a lot of data, but a lot of, of questions of priorities for, for what the members wanna do that is up to you. That is what House, House Research can provide and what this committee should be covering. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Sholin. I think uh, every member has got uh, the information. Uh, unfortunately, if you don't have two screens, you can see the documents. I'm hoping uh, you can pull it from the website uh, that we have for the committee so that you can have some of that information. There'll be homework on that. What is JCF or, or something like that? Or, or what's MIF? So get ready for the quiz. Uh, uh, just. Uh, <laughs> just to get people going. So anyway, uh, Ms. Beckel will um, walk us through the physical uh, information. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, so I am part of the House Fiscal uh, staff. There are 11 of us, uh, 10 who focus on subject areas, and then our chief fiscal analyst is Bill Marks. Our role as a department is basically to answer all of your fiscal questions. Um, but another big part of that role is uh, maintaining tracking spreadsheets for the budgets for various agencies, as well as uh, the ongoing appropriations. Um, most of you know that Minnesota, of course, works off of a base budgeting system, um, effectively where a base is set for the current years we're working on in the past and we work off of that base. Um, and I have an example of a spreadsheet that I can show you a bit later. We also work on something called fiscal notes. Um, and if you believe that your bill needs a fiscal note, as in this bill may cost the state money uh, please tell me right away and I will get that fiscal note request going. You can also definitely work um, with the committee administrator. Uh, Travis has been great at informing me um, on fiscal note needs and et cetera. Uh, and then over the interim, um, we effectively just do research and I've spent the past uh, intermittent interims uh, covering or uh, tracking COVID-19 spending on a federal level. Um, 
For this committee, I know many of you are familiar with the jobs committee. Uh, this is a bit pared down. As uh, Ms. Shaleen said, we basically just have the Department of Employment or Economic Development or DEED uh, for the accounts that will that you will be appropriating money for. Um, but it is DEED minus the broadband department that will be in the Industrial Education and um, Economic Development Committee under Chair Pulowski. Now I'm just going to share my screen to give you a basic idea of what the spreadsheet looks like. All right, can everyone see this spreadsheet? Yes, we can see it. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mikkel. Excellent. This is just an example of what the spreadsheet will look like. It is definitely subject to change over time. The current budget that I have laid out here is based upon Minnesota Management and Budget or MMB's November forecast. Uh, before the session truly gets underway in terms of financing, uh, we will get the February forecast as well as the governor's recommendations. When those come out, I will then be updating the spreadsheet uh, so that this committee can take a look at uh, any updates that MMB might have, as well as any govern uh, governor's priorities. Um, I have in this spreadsheet uh, numbers from fiscal years 18, 19, and then some actual and estimated numbers for fiscal years 20 and 21. These are not always in the spreadsheets, but I can always provide you with these numbers if you are interested. So please just let me know. Okay, I'm now going to stop sharing and then uh, provide you just an example of a fiscal note quickly. Uh, this is a fiscal note from 2019, I believe just to give you an idea of what the final product will look like. At the, on the front page, you have sort of a summary. Um, there's the cost to the state or the savings. Here we see that the impact of this legislation is actually a savings of 1.63 million and that it will cost the state, however, uh, 0.25 of a uh, FTE or full-time equivalent and when you look at the next page, it explains that there will be some costs for that uh, full-time equivalent um, salary of, of 0.25, uh, but overall savings to the state. Uh, and that is effectively what fiscal staff does. Um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Beckold. So members, uh, if you have any question for uh, the nonpartisan staff, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. If not, uh, you can always uh, contact them directly. Um, you can raise your hand and we will recognize you when you do that. So just wanted to open up uh, for members and give you an opportunity to respond. I don't see any hands raised. Uh, I would like to welcome again uh, our committee administrator uh, to Mr. Uh, Travis Reese to give us the, uh, you know, the next few meetings. We will be having meetings on Monday and Wednesday, uh, the lay of the land in the coming uh, weeks and uh, the plan for uh, moving forward. Uh, welcome uh, again, uh, Mr. Reese. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, yes, we do have, uh, so this upcoming Wednesday, uh, we will, uh, Deed will be coming to give a broad overview of the agency. Um, we asked them to keep a broad, sort of very broad um, presentation. And then from there, we get some questions, ask them to come back and maybe specific issues. Um, that's this Wednesday. There is no meeting next Monday in observance of the MLK holiday. Um, so then when we're back on Wednesday, um, potentially looking at um, getting uh, the unemployment insurance division from Deed to come and give us a presentation, both what's happened 
uh, since we adjourned um, session back in May and sort of the interim, we all know sort of the headlines and everything, but they can give us a detailed breakdown. They can also give us a breakdown on um, the federal package that passed and sort of the package we passed in December and how they interact. So they'll be able to talk about that. That's scheduled for the 20th. Um, and then again, then the next meeting I have planned out, I have up for the 25th. Um, we have the state economist and the state demographer both coming to give presentations on update, uh, updates on the status of the workforce, how the changing face of the workforce is impacting the economy, and giving us their expertise um, on some policy and what they do and how it impacts the issues uh, impacting this community. So the, that's again, that's for the 25th of uh, January, and that's as far out as I have planned at this time. Um, Presumably there may be some legislation being introduced that we will want to hear and start working on, um, or if we need to move it on to other committees and everything, we can probably start doing it at that point. But there's a lot of other opportunities. I know the chair has been open about if you have particular things you would like to hear from the departments under our purview that you would like them to come and specialize a presentation on, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to work with you and the departments to get something um, in front of the committee. Um, there are going to be as always, there are reports that do that come due, um, so, you know, this time of year, either through January, or February, that the agencies have been working on. Um, so we can take a look at those if necessary as well. So uh, we have some availability through January, and I'm happy to discuss adding things to the agenda. But um, that's kind of what we have on the lookout for the next couple uh, weeks. It is my intention to have meeting notices posted a week in advance. Um, this first week is a little rocky just because we're getting used to everything. Um, and generally be including the agenda in those week long note, week ahead notices, but um, trying to keep everyone informed that this committee will be meeting when they'll be meeting and what will be in the agenda as early as possible. Cause I know that um, scheduling and keeping track of everything and sort of this, the distance and the electronic uh, committee era can be a little difficult. So I'm hoping to be open and transparent and as uh, early as possible. So you have what you need to prepare. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm always available for questions and everything. So. That's um, that's all I have for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Reese. We do have an open uh, door process here. So if you've got any question at any time, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, to any of us so we can help you and guide you by all means uh, possible. I think I have almost everyone's uh, cell phone. So you can always reach out, text me at any point that you need some guidance or any question that you may have. Um, all of us have received uh, some extra uh, information through the, uh, your email in how we can do the Zoom meetings. Uh, quite frankly, I use my technical skills. Uh, my background is computer science, but I also do technical assistance to businesses and individuals. So please make sure that you test your technology that you're going to be using. Uh, because we want to be able to share and present information in a good way with the public. Uh, make sure that you're positioned correctly uh, on your screen uh, so that you don't uh, have to be playing around with the camera or anything that you have. Uh, please make sure that uh, we are all uh, you know, dressed uh, professional as we will do in uh, in-person meetings. Uh, I want everybody to be prepared in advance so we can share some of that information, uh, what we need to be doing. Uh, this hearing will always start on time and hopefully will end on time. So that's our target uh, going forward. Uh, as you know, this is a new process. I encourage everybody to go through the Zoom meeting uh, best practices that I shared to reduce uh, any major uh, challenges. If you have any questions at any time, hopefully during presentation, we'll let the presenters do the presentation. You can always raise your hand to get your question answered by the presenters. Or if you have any general question, please feel free uh, to reach out. Um, as we all know, uh, we do have a significant challenge facing all of us. Uh, COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on everybody. Uh, we've seen many small businesses who have used their resources, their money that they had in savings, uh, all the loans that they can acquire uh, we did significant work during December by providing resources to uh, small businesses and also those who are going to be receiving direct uh, payment from the Department of Revenue uh, in the, I believe it's today or within the next uh, few days, uh, restaurants, uh, bars and distilleries and 
those who we included in the first bucket will be getting their resources sent immediately. And uh, for all those who uh, need help uh, other than the first bucket, the counties, including my own county, Hennepin County, uh, they are working with small businesses to issue the county resources. Uh, please reach out to your county uh, as soon as possible if you need any help uh, with uh, small businesses that are struggling at this point. I think some of the heavy lifting we did during uh, the special session in December was also to extend uh, additional benefits, which was really much needed when we didn't know where the federal government was going to go. At this point, we do have a federal unemployment assistance, which is we will have that full hearing to talk about it. The also uh, additional benefits of UI that we issued, many employer, you know, workers lost their jobs at no fault of their own. And so we want to make sure that they get back to work. Some of the key issues that I'll be looking into moving forward is how do we strengthen Minnesota's uh, key industries and small businesses? How do we make sure that we strengthen our workforce development? Making sure that workers get the best opportunity so that they can get a better jobs, skills that they need to develop, uh, whether it's a short-term or long-term goals. We know many workers may not go back to the industry that they worked in, especially those who are in the service and hospitality industry who, uh, who have been hit hard by the pandemic. We also need to look into improving opportunities for low income individuals. Uh, we have to look into the gender uh, you know, issues that we have just had when many women are struggling, when individuals with disabilities uh, are struggling because of the pandemic. When we know that P Bi BIPOC, which means uh, black, indigenous and people of color are struggling to find employment during this pandemic. Uh, we also need to look expanding the economic opportunities, whether it's for greater Minnesota all communities that have been left out, whether you're a veteran, uh, whether you're a woman, uh, and also people, BIPOC communities, we need to look into sustainable process rather than just restarting the wheel every time. Uh, we also need to attract and invest in new innovative uh, business uh, sectors. Uh, we need to look into healthcare, technology, in small manufacturing. All those things will depend on our policy. This is a call to many industries who are thriving. We know that the K-SHIP uh, economic recovery hasn't worked for all of us. It hasn't worked for many. Uh, wh while the Wall Street is really thriving and you know, creating a lot of benefits, the Main Street individuals, the people that we serve have not seen that benefit. So we have to figure out if we're going to be addressing things forward, we need to support those who need the most. And to do that, we have to be more creative. We have to reimagine how we do our economy. Uh, this is going to take all of us. Uh, I think our collective vision, whether you serve a, a Cochichin County or Fillmore County or Hennepin County, we are all in this together. So we have to think beyond the small areas that we, we, we serve. As you have had from the, the lead for Republican, uh, Representative Hamilton, we will work hand in hand. This is not a partisan issue. Creating job opportunities for folks to put food on the table, to have a roof over their head, that's what the engine of economy is. And we have to know exactly how we will create opportunities beyond the pandemic because the pandemic never worked for all communities. Uh, Jay Zhong and uh, Representative Kegel have mentioned the disparities, the deep disparities that exist it's going to uh, take us to look beyond what we do uh, to figure out how we will respond to the needs. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited. Uh, we will uh, work together on several issues that I just talked about. That's a collective vision that we will have to address. Looking forward to working with the governor's administration and also looking forward to working with our colleagues in the Senate and figuring out what is the best way forward. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or anybody who wants to make any remarks, uh, you are welcome to make at this point. Uh, we don't have any uh, agenda items to go over. So, Mr. Chairman. Representative Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I just want to say thank you and thank you to Mr. Reese for getting the information out, uh, giving us uh, the ability to 
read up on what the committee, the jurisdiction uh, is going to be as far as what we believe. And uh, I wanna thank all partisan and nonpartisan staff for all the work that you do. And again, I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If there isn't any other member who wants to make any quick remarks, uh, I think this is at the end of our first meeting. Uh, we will have more work to do ahead. And I just wanted to thank you all again. Uh, thank you and welcome. Uh, with that said, uh, the meeting is adjourned.